Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, there is a little change of plan. I was supposed to have my remarks first, uh, but I'm going to welcome the Acting Director David Kral from the Department of Planning, and he's going to make his remarks first for the Ministry as our host, which is also quite appropriate to let the hosts speak in their house first, and then I'm going to make my remarks after David. Thank you, thank you very much, Alita. And sorry for disrupting this uh, kind of speaking order, uh, but I have to uh, run shortly after I make my opening remarks. Uh, so uh, please don't take it personally, but you know, the situation is, 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 is very dynamic at the moment. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I must say that uh, I'm glad that we are meeting here for the 10th time already. So it's an anniversary of the symposium, uh, the 10th anniversary. Uh, so I want to, uh, first of all, make the, my uh, uh, acknowledgement of thanks to the Institute of International Relations for keeping up uh, uh, this very good tradition and uh, taking further. Uh, and I'm also glad that we, as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, can continuously support this initiative. Uh, well, uh, those of you who know me, and there is a few of you, uh, because I can see a lot of friends uh, on the speakers list. Uh, know also that in the previous life, uh, I, am, uh, I was a think tanker. I made my way to the administration a few years ago. So from that perspective also, I do understand and do appreciate the need for continuous interactions between scholars and uh, practitioners. And uh, I'm quite convinced that uh, the symposium also serves to this purpose. Uh, Looking at the program this year, I can also see that the symposium is growing more global, uh, and particularly this year, uh, it has, at least in terms of the speakers, but also the topics, uh, expanded to the, to use the words of the, let's say, new US doctrine, into the uh, Indo-Pacific region. Uh, so uh, I would like to uh, uh, thank particularly Alitza, because I know that because of her past and affiliation, uh, she's quite well networked in, in that region. So we will have uh, a few interesting speakers from countries like Japan, or Australia, or India. And I think that's also very important for us uh, in the Czech Republic and Europe to look more into that region, because we somehow understand that, of course, the, uh, the center of gravity of the world, if I'm to use this parallel, uh, is, uh, is somehow shifting in, 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 in that direction. And I think it begs us you know, to pay much more attention to the developments in this, in this region. Uh, uh, also, uh, a lot of these countries that have been mentioned here, uh, I think, uh, uh, are becoming quite important for uh, Europe uh, in terms of uh, what we call the defense of a liberal world order, uh, which is uh, uh, something that you are pretty much aware of. And uh, in the uh, current situation, when, let's say, this liberal world order is being more and more contested by various actors across the globe, I think it uh, you know, uh, um, begs us to uh, uh, find, let's say, new alliances and new like-minded countries, if you like, uh, that will uh, help us to defend it. So, uh, so again, thanks, um, uh, thanks for that, for taking uh, this, uh, 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 or bringing in this new dimension uh, to the symposium. Uh, in terms of the issues, I think you've all seen the program, so you see that there is a lot, of, there is a lot on the table. Uh, it's, uh, we'll be discussing the future of the EU from the Central European perspective. We'll be discussing also the new course of the US foreign policy, energy, but also things like gender, for instance, which is not also uh, still so much present in, in, in the foreign policy discourse. So, uh, to cut the, my expose short, I want to thank you again for coming here, and uh, thanks to the Institute of International Relations, and particularly Alitza, for putting together such a wonderful program, and I wish you all, and all of us, a uh, very nice and productive two days of discussions. Thanks. I'm going to thank David before he uh, opens the door and closes the door for his wonderful remarks and his support. And also, I can see that other colleagues of his are here in the room. So 
Uh, the department is staying here regardless of his uh, current uh, absence. Um, Your Excellencies, um, fellow participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to take on the role of a progr program coordinator of this international symposium. It's my first time. A colleague of mine, Michal Kozan, used to organize it for uh, nine years. and. I want to thank him for uh, creating this sort of tradition uh, where we meet at the uh, Chernin Palace every year after summer to talk about key um, issues, challenges, uh, positive aspects uh, that are happening in Europe, in the Czech domestic um, environment, globally that affect the Czech foreign policy. Um, one of our preoccupations, of course, right now is where we're going from here. It's always nice to reflect on the past 10 years, but I think we've reached a point of some unpredictability in foreign policies, not just the Czech, but also around the globe, uh, with the um, different approach coming from uh, President Donald Trump. We've got the Chinese president also making his mark on the Chinese approach to foreign policies and others. And therefore, we decided to label this year as Rethinking the Future. Uh, the team uh, from the International, or the Institute of International Relations Prague, uh, prepared a very, what I consider a very rich uh, program for you, because we are going to talk about the future of Europe first, European Union, how this region, particularly Central Europe, contributes and what can do to help when we discuss the future of Europe. Then we also have global perceptions uh, in terms of how we respond to the US administration uh, right now from different perspectives. Uh, global economic reordering, so I think that's very topical for everyone to talk about economy. And then we'll also have different reflections on defense, space, and energy policies. Uh, I have to say I'm very proud that this year is actually, in terms of gender, is more equally represented. And one of our research findings that will be discussed se second day tomorrow is about the inequality in the foreign affairs for, for us women. So we did not make a conscious effort to increase the number of women. It just happened that we attracted very interesting brains, and they will be here with us sharing uh, their views. So it might be a bit different from last year's programs. Um, in terms of um, um, special topics, we also would like to pay our tribute to the 50th anniversary of Prague Spring. Uh, obviously here, the legacy of Prague Spring is very vivid, still in discussions, and uh, for me, I wasn't born at that time, obviously, I'm only feeding off some uh, memories of others who came before me, but I definitely remember the period of democratization after 1989. So reflecting on those values that the Prague Spring brought in terms of human dignity, um, rule of law, finding uh, partners that are reliable and want to support democratization processes, but also in terms of uh, uh, upholding values of the United Nations, international law, uh, human rights. Uh, all this, I hope, will be part of our discussions at a special panel uh, tomorrow. I have to say that um, it was an honor for me to approach uh, Professor Joseph M. Syracuse from RMIT Melbourne, who is the Professor of Human Security, International Diplomacy, but also President of the Council for Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences in Melbourne at the School of Global Urban and Social Studies. He has a lengthy list of books. Please, Joe, don't expect me to tell all of them. Uh, I'm sure you will incorporate your findings in your speech after my speech. Um, but I have to say, for someone to endure such a lengthy trip, um, I'm impressed how dynamic he still is. And what I value about Professor Syracuse is that he's very frank. So I hope we'll get very frank observations from him. He, I'm sure he won't disappoint me because I've had several discussions about topics with him already last two days since he arrived. However, 
He will be joined by other uh, very interesting speakers. We have uh, two more fellow Australians coming from Bond University in Queensland, which is my alma mater, so I'm very proud of it. Uh, then we also have uh, prominent speakers coming from United States. You will learn the names as we go from France, from Germany, from Hungary. Uh, some of us, I'm Slovak, so from Slovakia, Czech Republic, and more. What I also noticed based on our uh, list of uh, participants from the audience, we have different countries represented, um, such as Sweden or Norway. So we are really um, touching on different countries as well, not just the speakers, what they contribute, but also US audience can contribute with your remarks and questions. Um, last and not least, um, I think what's important for us is to learn the best practices from one another. There shouldn't be a topic here that would feel as not appropriate to ask or discuss. I think we are very professional and respectfully can respond to each other's uh, comments. Uh, from my personal perspective, I would like to thank the staff from our conference, ser conference services and uh, promotion, especially Lucia Boschkova and Jiří Mach. You will see them walk around. These people put a lot of effort staying late with little reward. And I hope we can this year make it a bit different for them by recognizing their contribution because without them, we would not have these badges or programs available. And also we have lots of volunteers here today who are very important to us. So I want to thank them um, personally um, because they do a great deal. Without, uh, talking too much, uh, please feel free to approach me if you have any questions uh, next two days. And I'd like to invite Professor Joseph M. Syracuse to deliver his keynote speech. And then we'll also have time for Q&A when you can ask him some questions. Thank you.